Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects quick tip scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna show you how you can make slash use a loop layer to comp script, which basically will take a single layer you have and it will go ahead and loop it in a certain manner over and over to basically fill the entire composition. So if you have a short clip, it will then basically be able to loop that clip over and over. And it also has options to apply opacity as well as if you want to pre-compose it, which allows you to have a little bit more control. So for example, if I wanted this to fade in and out each clip instead of just uh, looping the clip over and over, this can apply different looking effects for different cases. And this will allow us to do that as well as a few other things. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description, you can check out this code in the GitHub link, try it out for yourself, make modifications, make sure you follow us on GitHub as well. I always release code there early, uh, earlier than the videos that is. And in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. You can also join our Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel, become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, you can click on the link in the description and help us out financially. And you'll also get Discord status like a lot of our supporters like Rodrigo, Ferris, Jay Pearl, who are always helping uh, contribute a lot as well as supporting us. So we're just gonna jump straight in and create this script. I'm gonna create a function called loop layer to comp and we're going to require a layer and the composition is actually implied by the composition it's contained within so we'll start with that and what we want to do is for example we can just start with by saying loop layer to comp and i want to give it my first layer here so app.project.activeitem we're going to assume we have an open composition and then we're going to say layer number one this will go ahead and send layer one into here to loop it to our composition. And in the original example, I actually just used a loop. So what you could do is select multiple layers and do it as well. And uh, you can kind of customize it how you want like this. But we're just gonna focus on the main function here on how we're going to achieve looping this over and over uh, automatically with a couple of options like opacity and pre-composition abilities. So the first thing we're gonna need is our composition, which is gonna be layer.containingComp which is basically, you can get the composition just based on a layer, so we can sort of optimize there. And now we need to know how many duplicates do we need? So I'm gonna say num duplicates, and what are we going to do to calculate the number of duplicates? We basically need to take the duration of the composition and divide it by the length or the duration of our layer. So in order to get the length or duration of a layer, you take the out point, the point at which it ends, and the in point, the point at which it starts, uh, not the start time, but the in point, and you subtract them. So I'll take layer dot out point minus layer dot in point. That'll give us the layer duration. And we wanna divide that into our comp dot duration. So that will give us, say, for example, one minute divided by a five second clip would give us 60 divided by five or 12 duplicates that we're going to need. And this might give us a not a straight integer, we just need, uh, we don't want decimals basically, so I'm gonna say math.seal or math.floor, um, and this will allow you to basically uh, round it to the nearest integer. So if I would just say num duplicates, and I run this, I need to make sure that uh, we have an active composition selected and it's going to tell us about 36 duplicates are required. This may be a plus or minus one duplicate that we need to fill in the last space, and we'll adjust for that as we get to that point. Now I wanna make a, uh, an array to store all of my new duplicates uh, layers. So I'm gonna say duplicates is equal to an array, and we already have our first duplicate, which is our original. So I'm just gonna say layer uh, is gonna be our, our first duplicate, and then we're going to loop through our number of duplicates. So I'll say var i is equal to 1. i is less than or equal to our num duplicates. Increment i by 1. We're going to basically, in our example case, a minute divided by 5 seconds, which is a little bit more than this. Uh, we're going to go through 36 times, or our number of times we calculated to duplicate. And each time, I want to have a, a, a variable to represent our current duplicate, uh, just to make things a little bit easier. So I'll say this duplicate and I'm gonna say this duplicate is equal to our layer dot duplicate. 
And then we're also going to push that into our duplicates. So duplicates.push this particular duplicate. And now if we were to execute this, we actually should enclose everything in a begin and end undo group. That way we can simply control Z and undo everything. So I'm gonna say app.begin undo group. We'll call this a uh, loop this layer to comp. And I'm also at the very end of this function itself, I'm going to say app.end undo group. And once we run this, you can see we're gonna have 37 layers. Uh, I was actually pretty close to my math. And uh, now what we need to do is distribute them out in space so they stagger one by one. The way we're gonna do this is by creating a start time variable. And every time we duplicate a composition, we're going to change the start time um, and add our duration we already calculated here and then update the next layer start time. So our first start time is gonna be zero. Actually, our first start time is gonna be our layer duration because we already have our original layer. So we need to start not at zero, but right after our original layer we're duplicating. And then after we uh, grab this duplicate, we duplicate our layer, we push into duplicates. We'll just take this duplicate and We'll say dot start time is equal to our variable called start time. And then start time plus equals our layer duration. And since each of our layer durations are the same, we can just use the original. So now if we undo this and run it, you can see we're getting our initial, actually it looks pretty good. This needs to be moved up to the top, our original layer. So after our loop, I'll say layer dot move to beginning. And this will move it to the very top of the layer stack. So that way, when we select a layer or a comp and run it, it will be at the very top. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, you can see we have our original layer, and now we're just gonna be looping through, and we get all the way here, and uh, have about half of a clip plane, which I think in this case is gonna be fine. In the original example, I did math.seal plus one, so I, I rounded up instead of down for a number of duplicates. Let's go ahead and try that, and see if it gives us a better result and it uh, keeps requiring us to select composition. And now if we go to the very end here, it's gonna be also cut off. So um, I think this is actually better to have math.floor and we'll just have an extra layer at the end uh, which you can either delete or extend. Now we have a couple more options to do. If we wanna organize things, what we can do is say this duplicates.name is equal to i is equal to one. So we'll say i plus one and we'll convert that to a string. And this will just give us basically what number that layer is. So if we run this, it's gonna have our original layer and then two, three, four, all the way through our number of duplicates. The last thing we can do is add opacity options as well as pre-comp options, but the opacity is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, you just need to take the start time and subtract some padding and then add keyframes. So basically instead of uh, making the start time always the same, we're going to subtract some padding, which will allow us to add keyframes. So if I just say minus one there, you can see we have padding like this. This is where you would then add keyframes to fade in and out each of the layers, uh, but you can check out the original code for that. I do wanna go over, however, how to pre-compose all of this stuff. So I'm gonna add an argument to my loop layer to comp and say pre-compose bool. If this is true, we want to pre-compose all these layers we created. If it's false, we don't want to. So I'm gonna say true when we execute this. And now what we need to do is grab all the indices of these duplicated layers. And since they're all gonna be a little bit mashed up, we're gonna do this after we create all of our layers and move them around. I'm gonna say var i is equal to zero, i is less than our duplicates.length. This is why we created the duplicates so we could loop through them and fill uh, an array called indices with all of our values. So that will just be duplicates i, dot index and now we have an array full of all of our indices we can say uh, our comp dot layers dot precompose and what are the indexes of the layers or the indices of the layers we want to precompose we have an array for that what's the name of our precomposition we can name it whatever we want my precomp and do we want to move those attributes to a new composition yes we do so we'll say true 
now if we run this, you can see now we're going to have the whole thing pre-composed uh, and we can go in and make adjustments in there, but it will just basically take all those massive amount of layers we created and compress them down into one. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the full code for this in GitHub. Try it out for yourself. And make sure you follow us there for coding updates. In the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. Be sure to join our Discord server, get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, help out, and much more and you can also join the youtube channel as a member supporter premium supporter or vip down in the description and uh, get cool perks as well thanks again for watching we'll see you guys next time